as soon as the game season is over. Dan, Thor and his mates can't wait to get out roost shooting. It looks like there are plenty of pigeons about, but there is a vital ingredient missing. Wind. They're hoping to make a good bag regardless. During February, it's tradition to obviously go out every Saturday to uh, get on top of the pigeons. The numbers have uh, crept in slowly through the year, but the last three weeks, there's been literally thousands turn up and the rape seems to be getting a bit of a hammering at the moment. So Ted obviously wants the beaters once again to get out, get stuck into the woods, spread about and, and try and thin a few out. So we, we all meet back at the farm. Um, on a Saturday, we'll probably get there about half past two. We'll all have a little chat and a catch up. Then hit the woods about three o'clock and obviously till, till the last daylight drops drops out and um, yeah, pitch black takes over. So normally it's pretty good. Like I say, it's a little bit early at the moment, but once the night creeps in, we should do a little bit better. With a huge wood to choose from, Dan's experience helps him pick the best spot. Where we're standing now, as you can, there's, there's quite a lot of pigeon mess around and feathers and obviously find a decent gap between, you know, above you because you don't want to be shooting through trees and losing a lot of pellet out of the, out the cartridge. So, yeah, also, I, I just love to have a, a gap just above my head there. I've got a lot of foliage around me so the birds can't see me. A lot of birds will sort of notice city trees and that's what I was taught um, as a youngster for a lot of older people. They'll, they'll always follow taller trees as city trees. So we're standing underneath like a tall ash right now. And as you can see, each bird that's coming so far where we've been have been landing in these taller trees before they're nipping in lower. So yeah, I like to try and surround myself around them trees and hopefully they'll follow that path and we can get a few shots. See the height of them, James. See, they're slowly creeping in. But if Rob don't shoot them, they're getting low, you see. See them just folding up, look? Yeah. So they're, fold they're committing these birds now. Yeah, they want to be. Yeah, their wings are folded back. It's just if someone shoots them. There yeah. There we go. Just as I say. Dan's wearing his favourite Jack Pike clothing, and if he gets to use it, he's shooting his Maruku MK38, the same gun he used a couple of weeks back on Beater's Day. I try and stick with the same gun now. Like I said, um, when we were pheasant shooting, there was a day when I'd chop and change, chop and change constantly, but I think the only way you're going to get better at shooting is by sticking with the same gun. Obviously, I, I changed my cartridges up. I mean, I've got a bit of a mixed bag today, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably just... Stick with like a 29 gram six or something. And I've got some steels out as well to try. That's if we can get some pigeons to turn up. <laughs> I mean, there seems to be thousands around, but like I say, it's early and they're a million miles away at the moment. So hopefully they'll start coming in as we go. The birds are starting to appear, but they're staying high. Dan's worried that his mates will shoot too early and scare the pigeons away before they come into range. We've got Rob Tweed over to my right hand side. I mean, this is a massive wood. Got Rob and Riley straight in front of us, probably a good 150 yards in front. And then Rob and yeah, probably another 12 of his mates are out, which are spread all over the farm. But obviously you've got the lights of Rob trying to shoot everything a million miles away. We're never going to get anything. <laughs> look at this lot coming in, look. There is literally thousands of them there. Look at that, see the height of them though, Jane? Just extreme. They would never be that high with good wind. You'd never see them that high. You can see them birds are folding up. They're just having the little last look round. And then everyone's shooting them. There we go. What did I tell you? It's a waste of time. It's a, you tell them at the start of the evening, do not do this, do that. And it would just be a waste of time. Everyone's banging, as you can hear, in the background, so everyone making an noise will just push them pigeons higher and higher and higher. And what they normally do, if you, if you can keep still and keep quiet, like some of these now, they'll creep in and they'll circle. They'll come over, take a little scout, head back out, then they'll start coming lower and creep, creep in, like this one. Well, I just, just jeered again, but, yeah, they'll seem to get lower. And I like to say to people, just shoot them tree height, a little bit above. There's no point in shooting the stuff a million miles away, because they'll... They'll get to know where you are and they'll just bugger off. And especially shooting at big gangs as well, that's something I won't shoot at. I like to just pick out the odd groups of 10 and below, and I think in big groups, because you're only educating as well. <laughs> the stuff you're shooting at's too high. You want to let them come in, not too high. No, Dan, I'm having them swoop down low. See this corner where I am? It's yeah. the nuts, mate. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a bit quiet. A bit where I am. It's a bit quiet, yeah? 
Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's more coming, have it? There's more coming anyway. Enjoy yourself and we'll see you soon. At least that's one in the bag, and the crop contents prove it's been feasting on the farmer's oilseed rape. But it is still nowhere near as busy as Dan was hoping. Normally, you, you'll hear shots galore all around every, all the time, every year. Like, crazy amount of shooting. But it all depends whether people are in the uh, neighbouring farms, right. standing in them woods, you know. No good. If you have that decent wind, decent bit of wind, and that and that keeps them low. It just keeps them low. You don't get none of that ridiculously high stuff. It keeps them low, tree high all the time. The light is going fast now, and the pigeons have stopped coming. Dan's total is a poultry four largely down to the lack of wind. Picked four, just a million miles high. Oh, yeah, a, right. million, a million, million miles high, didn't bother shooting it, I think. First shot, first kill. Yeah, good. Done. Well done. Right. How many shots do you have? I had two can crows down right above my head, and James here, and I didn't. It's still loads in that crop, look. Mm. Full up, isn't it? Yeah. All right, do we get to, we'll get to the yard now, shall we? <coughs> and seal the rest of the boys. It's been a frustrating evening, but good to get out, and there will be other days when the wind is better. To find out more about Browning and Maruku guns, go to browning.eu, and for Jack Pike clothing, see jackpike.co.uk.